the last few months, it seems that tensions between the West and Russia have been rising. We've had the um, nerve agent attack on ex-Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter in the uh, Yule in the UK. And then there was a suspected chemical weapons attack by the Syrian government, uh, I think it was a, a week ago. And uh, obviously the US responded with that with airstrikes along with its allies, France and the UK. So how would you describe the US-Russia relations right now? And how much tension is there really? Well, I would say that the Kremlin has been pursuing a policy hostile to the United States, to the West, for over a decade. And you just referred to um, the incidents in, in Britain where the Russians used chemical weapons to poison uh, a resident of Great Britain. Uh, you refer to the Assad use of chemical weapons against his own citizens, which was defended by Moscow. They have conducted aggression in Syria. They are conducting a war, a hybrid war against Ukraine and Donbass. They are supplying arms to the Taliban against the United States and its allies in Afghanistan. And the, and the United States is finally starting to push back against these truly provocative and dangerous Kremlin policies. Mm -hmm. And Moscow warned that a U.S. military uh, intervention in Syria would lead to consequences. But other than some critical words so far, the response has been pretty mute. Is the U.S. still expecting um, some kind of response from Russia? And, and if so, what kind of response are, is the U.S. Well, I, I would not rule out a response. The United States military is much more powerful, much more capable than the Russian military. So Moscow can threaten but if they tried to use their military against ours, conventional military, they would lose decisively. Russian mercenaries, although Russian mercenaries are closely tied to the Russian government, attacked American allies and American advisors in Syria. Our forces responded, and there were reports of hundreds of Russian dead soldiers, mercenaries. I don't know if those reports are accurate, but certainly there were probably hundreds of casualties because our forces are far more capable. French President Emmanuel Macron is coming to DC on Monday. What can we expect from that visit and are Russia and Ukraine on the agenda? Well, one, I think that President Trump and President Macron have established a very good working relationship, a congenial relationship. I would expect that to continue. Um, we've seen within the last couple of weeks, uh, French and American cooperation, also with other allies in Europe, uh, in response to the Skripal poisoning in the UK, in response to Assad's use of chemical weapons against his own people. Uh, and I believe that the cooperation between Paris and Washington that we've seen in those two instances will be reaffirmed during the Macron visit. Uh, I fully expect that, therefore, relations with an aggressive Kremlin will be on the agenda, and the need to help Ukraine, to support Ukraine against Russia's war in Donbass um, will also be on the agenda. Trump's administration uh, placed uh, sanctions on seven oligarchs with close ties to President Vladimir Putin, including uh, the president's son-in-law. Um, you've actually praised those sanctions and said they're actually pretty tough, especially in comparison to the previous list of sanctions that uh, the US put out. Can we expect anything further in terms of sanctions against Russia? And, and, what, and what can we expect? I think it depends, in the first instance, on Kremlin policy. If they continue their aggression in Ukraine, if they continue to support the Taliban against the United States and Afghanistan, if they continue to support the use of chemical weapons by Assad in Syria, if they use, in the future, chemical weapons to poison people around the world, uh, if they continue to fly provocatively close to NATO planes and ships um, in Europe and elsewhere, uh, additional sanctions are likely over one or more of those policies, those very nasty and dangerous Kremlin policies. The, the U.S. has approved the sale of uh, Javelin anti-tank missiles and they are expected to arrive in Ukraine this month, I believe. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Well, I, I have no idea regarding the arrival, whether it's happened already, whether it's about to happen, whether it will happen at some point in the future, of uh, these weapons in Ukraine. I think it's long overdue for us to provide these weapons. Uh, the Kremlin 
even to this day, maintains a policy of a, a war, is running a hybrid war in Ukraine's east. There are scores of violations of the ceasefire every day. There's never been one day of an actual ceasefire. The Kremlin, since the first Minsk ceasefire in September of 2014, has seized well over a thousand additional square kilometers of Ukrainian territory. In these mini offenses, they have used tanks effectively, providing javelins will stop those tanks. Mm -hmm. So it will make it easier for Ukraine to defend the territory which Moscow is currently trying to move into. The US Congress has approved, I think it was $200 million in terms of uh, for military assistance to Ukraine, which I think was set to include uh, lethal weapons and intelligence support. Mm -hmm. Is that money definite? And can you tell us more about what, uh, what will be provided in that assistance? I believe um, some of the money mentioned by Congress is definite. Others is contingent upon reform by Ukraine in the defense sector. Uh, I hesitate to talk about what may be provided in the future. I think the Ukrainian government f needs to make up its mind about what it wants and then to offer its ideas to the US government and reach an agreement. On the subject of reforms, actually, uh, there's been a lot of exasperation from the European Union and from international organizations uh, with regard to Ukraine's reform progress, uh, the failure to so far adopt the uh, law on the anti-corruption court and to raise gas prices to the market rate has, uh, has affected its uh, IMF tranches. Um, Ukraine has said that it expects an IMF tranche of some $2 billion to come in June, but today uh, I think there's been reports of IMF saying that the progress, uh, Ukraine's reform progress has been slow. So what is, what is your take on that? What can Ukraine expect of this tranche uh, and, and is it likely to get it? The, the quick answer to your question is that without movement to the market gas price, the higher price, without addressing the concerns of the IMF and others in the West on uh, NABU and the anti-corruption court, uh, you're not gonna see that tranche. So the, the government has have been reluctant to address these issues, and as long as it remains reluctant, I don't think you'll see that assistance.